Hello, BookTube. Well, it's leap day. It's the 29th day of February. It's a leap year, which makes today a perfect launch pad to talk about the enormity of the month of March on BookTube. March is unbelievably crowded with events on BookTube in the best possible way. So I thought we'd break down all of my own a pile of obvious possibilities for March and all of its various events, uh, which I will be generating solely through randomly picking scraps of paper out of a TBR jar, because I don't care what I read. <laughs> and I want you to stick around to the halfway point of the video, because at the halfway point there'll be a long, unskippable in-video ad uh, where I tell you about BetterHelp, a sketchy website where you can hand over all of your personal and medical and financial information. Uh, they will bundle it all up and sell it to Facebook at a tidy profit, and in exchange you will get inconvenient Wi-Fi-based internet rap sessions with some rando Calrissian uh, plucked off the street who has no psychiatric training whatsoever and is almost guaranteed to make a comment at some point in one of your sessions about your physical appearance. So you're going to want to stick around for that and then stick around for the end of the video because I've got a major announcement, guys, 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 about this channel, about the whole future of this channel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in case you're wondering, in case you can't tell, I made the mistake of watching like a hundred March TBRs of TBR videos today, including probably 80 channels that I don't subscribe to. So <laughs> I've got a lot of bad booktube habits to work out. In fact, I will not be picking my TBR picks, what the books I'm going to spend my time reading in March, randomly out of a jar. Because it's not a game. And I value my reading time. And I will not be doing an in-video in read for better help, even though they are making some sort of ghoulish, Dracula-style second attempt at legitimacy on YouTube, having been roundly denounced as a fraud the first time they did it. Uh, and there aren't any major channel changes. <laughs> Unfortunately, all of you were probably hoping for that. But no, it's not going to happen. I'm going to do everything the same. But the... The initial part of the video about March being just a blizzard of booktube events is true. <laughs> there are all kinds of them. I thought we'd go over them together, and I've tried to be a good booktuber here. I have all sorts of prompts and aids to help you visualize what I'm doing. So let's start off with March Mystery Madness. I'm one of the co-hosts for March Mystery Madness this year. It's in its ninth year on booktube bigger and more popular than ever. And because it's in its ninth year, the, th the theme this time around is To the Nines which can be any way that you want. Is there, there are all sorts of prompts. Is there a tuxedo on the cover? Is there even a tuxedo cat on the cover? Uh, does it star wealthy people? Uh, and is it maybe the ninth in a series? This is mystery writers love to write books in series. And I've decided to latch onto that as my own guiding light for March this time around. I will be reading the ninth book in, a, in Murder Mysteries. As many as I can get my hands on. I have enough to last me through the whole month already. And I wanted to show you the one I'm going to be starting with is this. It's a Caribbean mystery. The ninth Jane Marple mystery. And never mind this old Fontana cover. I have no idea what explains it. I don't think the artist did either. Uh, but I'll be reading that uh, for March Mystery Madness. This, that was done by Agatha Christie in 1964. Had a little bit of a dodgy critical reception. Uh, the critics who didn't read it praised it, and the ones who did said, it's okay, but it's it's fairly shticky. It's fairly obvious Christie stuff. And Falling back on the, the usual condescending critical line of, if you like this sort of thing, you'll like this, <laughs> which is, doesn't do anybody any good. Later critics, people who have looked back on it from a great Olympian distance, tend not to have very high opinions of it, but I remember really liking it. So I'll be giving that a try. Now let's let's move on here because we've got a lot of events to go through. Like, for instance, there's a new booktube event called There's No Place Like Rome. Uh, the, the brainchild of Faith over at Faith and Books, and I am one of the co-hosts for this, and it is a, a, a longer, longer than a month, a booktube event about ancient Rome. So anything goes. Do you want to read books that were inspired by ancient Rome? Do you should be a lot of science fiction and fantasy? Do you want to read... Books that were written in ancient Rome. There were plenty, huge literary footprint left behind. Do you want to read histories of ancient Rome? Mysteries set in ancient Rome. Fiction set in ancient Rome. I want to do all of the above. I have not made any kind of a specific TBR for the whole month because I want to do a book a day. Uh, I, can, I think that'll be easy, especially since there'll be overlap with March Mystery Madness. Many of the people who have written Roman murder mysteries have gotten to the number nine. I tend to reread them all. Uh, but I have... A picture here of the first thing that I'm going to start with, 
Uh, this is from 1984 is when it was published in France, but it, it was translated to English in 1988. Uh, and the, the title stayed the same. This is Neuropolis by Hubert Montaigne. And uh, I read this, for, I think it was Penguin that brought this out as a trade paperback. It didn't look like this. When it came out in America in, in 1988, I read, I read it. Serious literary novels set in ancient Rome are rare, so I, I gobbled it right up. And I recommended it. I could, I can recommend it, but I, I wasn't in love with that reading experience in, in the late 80s. And the more I think, I've never gone back to it, and the more I think back on that, ex that reading experience, the more I get the feeling that it was the translator who was either making the book different or worse, or both. Uh, so I will I will be dispensing with the translator. My first read uh, of There's No Place Like Rome will be uh, will not be in English, but I'm going to give it a try and I will report back. So that, but I'm going to do doing a lot of Roman reading for There's No Place Like Rome. You won't be able to shut me up on the subject. It's my favorite thing. So, uh, so there's that. Then what else have we got here? Rogers Cheap Old Book Club, the cheapest book club on the internet, over at Michael K. Vaughn's channel. Uh, is Roger's Cheap Old Book Club. A different book every month. Uh, Mike has a, a Discord that, by all accounts, is hopping and really nice. Uh, and for March, Roger's Cheap Old Book Club is The 39 Steps uh, by John Bucken. And I have it in this old Wordsworth classic. This is all of the the uh, Richard Hannay novels, and The 39 Steps is by far the most famous of the Richard Hannay novels. And Bucket is incredible. He's incredibly good. Uh, he's incredibly readable. And 39 Steps, I hate to say it because I was reading other things in this volume. I went back to this volume uh, uh, for Mr. Stanfast and for Green Mantle and skipped the 39 Steps. I've read the 39 Steps so many times that, that I, I sort of skipped it. So I've never read it in this Wordsworth volume, and I'm going to do that. Uh, right alongside Roger's Cheap Old Book Club. Uh, it's it's a humdinger of a novel. And also, Buchan is a humdinger of uh, of a stylist. It's it's often overlooked because he was such a trailblazer and because he can be so crude. Uh, but he's a terrific writer. So it's going to be a joy to go back to, uh, to uh, The 39 Steps. Uh, I had, I found a really great looking old mass market paperback at the Brattle, uh, I think last year. I hauled it on this channel. I'm sure that I did. I never get anything with Brattle that I don't haul on this channel. Can't for the life of me find it. I, I'm assuming that, that it fell apart. <laughs> I'm assuming that that happened. Although I think you'd think I'd remember that. Uh, but then the, uh, the next uh, March booktube event is Classics and Company, which is Micah Cummins and Ann Novella and myself. Uh, a roster of classics of all kinds. We range all over the place and read them in a relaxed fashion, basically 90 days per instead of a month. So the books can be fairly long. A couple of them have been very long. And uh, the next one is Middlemarch. <laughs> the next one is George Eliot's novel Middlemarch, uh, which came it came out as a book in 1872. And it is historical fiction because it, in it, uh, George Eliot is writing about 1830s. She's writing about the 1830s in England. A, a, tumul a time of tumultuous change, industrialization hitting the, the shires and, and uh, the reform bill, the great reform bill, a change in monarchs. Not that that would really matter. Uh, and this is going to be a lot of fun. There's also a Discord for Classics and Company. All these Discord servers that I don't go to, so I am largely convinced now to give Discord another try and join the servers that will have me and also make one of my own for my own events. I'm largely determined to do that. I just, I'm hesitating because my initial exposure to Discord just was not good. But I don't want to miss out on this. And that, that I imagine that's where a lot of conversations will take place. And I am going to use the March into April Classics and Company as an occasion to reread Middlemarch. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun. This is, this is, uh, uh, it's a tremendous novel. You wouldn't think it, and it it takes you a little bit to get into it, to get into its greatness. But once you do, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, then what else have we got? Uh, uh, well, I mentioned Roger's Cheap Old Book Club. There's also my 
Book Club, the Steve Tiberius Donahue Book Club, which happens on this channel. In March, we are reading the third of Hilary Mantel's uh, Thomas Cromwell novels, The Mirror and the Light. This takes place from 1536 to 1540, and these are closely narrated and closely yoked to Cromwell's own perceptions. We know his every thought, his every impression and dream and feeling. We don't know that about anybody else except what he can intuit. Uh, which makes it awkward because, of course, the only reason this book's action ends in 1540 is because Cromwell had his head cut off in 1540. How are you going to do that, <laughs> right? He's not writing this book. In the book, he's not writing a book. He is writing a book. He's writing a book called The Book of Henry, about Henry VIII. But he's not writing these memoirs. So how are you seeing them, I guess, is the, the typical fiction question. But it's a long book. It will definitely count as one of the other events on our list for March, but we're going to be going through it, and it is conveniently uh, divided up. So it, it, there's uh, there's six parts, so we can do, you know, uh, we can divvy that up. We'll do part one for the first weekend, but I'll make a separate video about that. So that's... Uh, the Steve Tiberius Donahue Book Club, and I have another, I'll do another video about that because I now have copies of the book to give away, which is lots of fun. Uh, then, I mentioned this is really long, this is a really long book, and actually, uh, so is Middlemarch in a lot of editions. What is this, this vintage edition? 888 pages. Middlemarch is not a short book either, and that dovetails perfectly with another March event, which is March of the Mammoths. Uh, where you are encouraged to take down and read a book of 800 pages or more. Sorry about the light there. It doesn't, I, I am just going to apologize for the light in every video, because no matter where I go, the light is a problem somehow. It, not always the same problem, but it's always a problem somehow. Uh, this was invented by Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse, and has a wonderful laid-back air to it, as a lot of these events do. You can't get more laid back than Michael K. Vaughn's channel. And Classics and Company takes longer than a month. You can take all the time you want. Uh, there's no place like Rome is also longer than a month. And the, the relaxed element of March of the Mammoths comes from Jason himself, who is, by his own admission, a slow reader. <laughs> so he he will often pull down a book for his for his own March of the Mammoths that he knows he's not going to finish in the month of in the month of March. So there's no pressure there either. It's mainly meant, I think, to just put your hands on these things and get your toes wet. Because a lot of people have these these huge books on their shelves that they don't get to because they're really big. Uh, and I have been, I'm going to read more, of course, than just one mammoth for March. I don't leave those books on my shelves. I will be reading the March books, the March new releases that are over 800 pages. There are, I think, five of them that I've seen so far. I'll be reading those. But I also want to pick some mammoths on my own. And I did pick one, uh, egged on by a few of you. Uh, I'm going to reread Musashi by Eiji Yoshikawa. <laughs> it's the, I, I don't know that I'll read it in these mass market paperbacks, these great things with the step backs of all the characters from inside the book. Uh, I don't know that I'll read it in these mass market paperbacks. I have all of them, I believe, but I don't want to destroy them, uh, which I guess is an argument to read them and destroy them because I don't want books that I can't read on my shelf. I don't want to be saving books just because, oh, aren't you nice? <laughs> so, but this this came out in serial form in the 1930s. It's a Japanese historical fiction about, about a man named Musashi, about a great swordsman. Uh, and it was wildly successful. I, I don't know that there's ever been an English-language Yoshikawa biography. I don't think there's ever been... There's certainly never been a good reprint of this book, you know, with a long... Uh, Penguin or vintage style introduction. There's no other, actually, this vintage edition doesn't have anything but Middlemarch. It doesn't have an introduction. But you know what I mean a Penguin a classic or something like that. As far as I know, those kinds of things don't exist for this book. Or, and so, and so a lot of people who read this have no idea the size of the phenomenon that this was. It was a huge phenomenon. Everybody was talking about it, everybody was reading it. And it waited decades to get a book form. It got a book form in 19, I think, in the 1970s, sometime in the early 1970s, and it waited a decade after that to get what I believe is its only English translation. I, I forget, I don't know if these old paperbacks will actually credit the translator. Yeah, Charles Terry is is the translator of Musashi, which is ridiculous. There should be five English language translations of this for you to pick from. Instead, there's only one. Ridiculous. Uh, and that came out in the early 80s. So 
you you can tell because it had a five volume mass market release and there was also a hardcover with an in an an unmissable cover that did really well and continues to do really well uh so this despite the fact that this took so long to get into english and has only been translated once it definitely has a readership uh so this is this is going to be my mammoth one of my mammoths my elective mammoth if you would for march of the mammoths and I'll make a video about it, talking about my reactions. The, one another reason why I don't think I'll go with these mass market paperbacks is because they don't give the feel of reading a mammoth, whereas the hardcover that collects them all does. Another one for March of the Mammoths that I that I am I'm making my way through it. I might as well log it in for March of the Mammoths. Is this is Post War by Tony Jude, which I am loving more and more this time around, especially since this time around I have company. I have Ben for company. <laughs> so, so, and Ben didn't touch this book. I'm pretty sure he didn't read it. But uh, I'm having a blast. I'm up to uh, Irish independence. And that is it just... Uh, uh, every subject that he moves on to, you just want to settle in a little deeper because he's such a great storyteller. Just so good. He's such a great storyteller. Uh, and I believe that exhausts all of my props. That is... Uh, that is a th an outline, anyway, of March on BookTube. I'm not doing middle grade March, and th I, there may be a few other events that I'm that I would be interested in doing, but but just uh, don't know about or I'm not remembering. I don't I don't need read enough middle grade literature and or care about it enough. I'm not interested enough in it to to devote a book to that for the month of March, especially when there are so many other claimants on my time. But there you go. That is a brief summary of some of the mega events coming our way in March. And you know what I'm going to ask, since I'm very nosy. What are you doing for March? How many of these events are you doing? I watched those 100, those 90 March TBR videos. I don't know what possessed me. I found a couple of channels I didn't know about that I immediately subscribed to, where the person was looking at the camera and, and being genuine. I found a lot of stuff that wasn't, though. A lot of stuff where people just... God, we always talk in this little corner of BookTube. We talk about how in the bad old days, the only BookTube channels you can find were patently insincere shriekers doing a shtick on camera. Uh, and isn't it better that, that there are so many genuine channels now that, oh my God, <laughs> there, are, there are a huge number of insincere channels out there. Huge numbers of them. And I encountered a whole bunch of them because they're all doing March TBRs. Fortunately, though, all the genuine people that I've met through this through this platform are also doing March TBRs. So feel free to let me know what are you looking at for March? Are you going to let BookTube dictate any of your reading for March? And if so, what? March of the Mammoths? March Mystery Madness? There's no place like Rome? <laughs> are you a member in good standing of Roger's cheap old book club? I'd love to hear it all. Feel free to tell me everything. But that's that's some of what I'm going to be doing. And I will keep you updated as the month goes on. So I'll wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.